Hello and welcome to Two Year Automotive's Part 3 of Is It Worth It to Purchase from IAA Salvage Options. In this video we'd like to cover some DTC trouble codes that are common with the Traverse, the Enclave, the Acadia, and the Outlook. If you've been following my videos about my first purchase from IAAI Salvage Auction, you already know that this $600 or 1950 after taxes, fees, and transport purchase was successful in some ways. The undercarriage and oil pan damage were not catastrophic events for this motor. However, the badly designed GM timing chain system was damaged potentially by the collision itself or just the stress of it running for a short period of time without oil. Let's break down these DTC codes. The first part of the code, P03, as an ignition or misfire related issue. Each number after directs us to the specific use and location on the motor. The next digit 4, 6, or 9 designates intake side 4 or exhaust side 6 or 9. The intake side is near the center of the motor and the exhaust is to the outside. The last set of numbers indicates at which side or bank of the motor the sensor is located. Intake right bank would be 4-0, while 4-5 would be the left bank. Exhaust right bank would be 6-5, while 9-0 would be the left bank. Right and left is looking from the rear of the motor. My particular codes were the P0340 primary and the P0365 secondary. Both codes indicated the right side top chains are out of sync with the main bottom timing chain or the sensor wiring is defective. Being that P0340 is the primary or first listed DTC means that this sensor could affect the secondary code P0365 but not vice versa. So it would be a waste of time to test the exhaust sensor first. If the intake sensor is bad it will need to be replaced before any additional testing is completed. If it is good, then the sensor is doing its job and there is an issue with the timing chain. Here I'm giving an example of back probing the wires, which is what you'll have to do to test the sensor. However, these are not the two wires you will want to check. The positive probe should go to the middle green and white wire and the negative should go to the solid green wire. If you don't have the skinny adapters, you'll have to push these in pretty far to make a connection. The sensor should also be connected and the ignition in the on position without starting the motor. Once you get the probes in, you should get a 5 volt reading on your multimeter for DC current. Now you can put a metal wrench or steel close to the magnetic sensor. You should see the voltage go to zero when the metal is near the sensor. A cheap Harbor Freight digital multimeter works just fine for this. If you can't get a reading or the voltage doesn't change, then you have a bad sensor, sensor which needs to be replaced. Unfortunately, a working sensor means you have a timing chain issue. I went ahead and replaced this sensor with one I picked up at the junkyard. But as you can see, the DTC codes came right back. It is hard to start and only stays running for a few seconds. Unfortunately, GM makes this repair almost impossible to do unless you have a lift, since the quickest method is to drop the motor from the bottom of the SUV. This motor can be taken out from the top, but there is so much hardware and wiring to be removed, the amount of time and labor required is daunting for all but some seasoned mechanics. If you want to have this work done, it's going to cost you anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000. If you're mechanically inclined and would like to attempt this repair yourself, uh, you could probably pick up a timing chain kit for around $120.